Abby Myers, North Town Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Over a thousand different interviews on the web, ntnm.org, with links to YouTube, where you can catch all the videos from the last eight and a half years. Uh, we want to thank the men and women of the 24th District for all the good jobs, the good job they're doing. Albeit maybe a little understaffed, they're doing a great job. We want to thank uh, Commander Roberto Nieves, who's made a very good impression on us in his early days in the neighborhood, as well as Sergeant Sisk, Zalitith Moore, and Mike Stahula from the Community Policing Staff. It is a pleasure to have somebody that Larry Supperton has referred to as a groundbreaking campaign manager with new strategies that will, I mean, the, the job he did for Megan Goldish. And Megan, if you're watching, I want to get you on the show if, it, if it's okay with you. I know you're not up for election for 10 years, but uh, <laughs> or whatever it is, but it would be great to have you back on the show. I'm talking about the camp, campaign manager, the head of K&I Communications, um, and there's a lot more than that, too, not to mention is, is um, Sean Tenner. How you doing? Good, Good to see you again, Avi. First of all, my pleasure. Thank you. And you know what? Before we jump into politics, let's talk about, you got this thing about doing your humanitarian work. I don't know why the hell you'd want to do something like well, that. A lot of free time on my hands <laughs> uh, after elections. So. Yeah, you're not a very big fan of slavery, are you? No, no, I am. Uh, I'm dead set against that. I, I will agree with you upon that. And, we and appreciate then some, that. I mean, that's... Uh, you know, it, it's uh, we. As a matter of fact, the guest we're having on the show in the next week or two, uh, Peter. Bull. Bull, Bull, yeah, I keep. I, I don't remember the pronunciation of his middle name, but uh, you know, he's somebody Sean got us as well as um, Kenneth Elispana from the South Sudanese Community Center, and Peter's from the Lost Boys of Sudan. And by the way, I really like that shirt you gave me with the South Sudanese Community yes. Center. And when I wear it sometimes in the neighborhood and I see somebody with obvious African and native African features and they see the flag of Sudan, they start staring and trying to Is read that right? my Yeah. <laughs> it's really pretty cool. Yeah, they're wondering what that's what's this Jewish kid with the Yamoki <laughs> wearing the Sudanese thing for? <laughs> I, I suppose people wonder, what's this Unitarian fellow mm. doing wearing this South Sudan Development Partners shirt, too? So I have the same shirt yeah. with my script. So. And actually, you got to go to a Unitarian church in... Cape Town, the <laughs> only Unitarian church in all of Africa. My, um, my traveling companion, my, uh, my girlfriend, um, uh, Shivali, and my friend, uh, Ryan Hughes, who I've known since uh, grade school, we went to Rwanda together right after the election. And... Um, a lot of people say, why did you go to Africa right after the election? And, you know, I, I managed uh, Alderman Michelle Smith's 79-vote uh, uh, victory. So I told people I wanted, to avoid, I wanted to avoid the, the conflict, the tension, and the political instability of the 43rd Ward. So I went to Rwanda where people, <laughs> people know how to get along. Um, so we were in Rwanda for about, for about a week and, um, and then went down to uh, South Sudan for a week and then to uh, uh, Johannesburg and Cape Town in South Africa. And I, I was uh, so pleased to be able to discover, discover what a wonderful Jewish community there is in Cape Town. Um, we went to a stand-up comedy show and we um, uh, heard from the headliner, uh, the headliner comedian, uh, Tracy Kloss, who's a um, uh, Jewish woman who moved from Johannesburg to Cape Town and uh, decided to try her hand at stand-up comedy, just doing open mic nights and uh, performing here or there, and then has now risen up to be probably the most popular stand-up comedian in uh, in South Africa. Um, now that her fellow South African uh, comedian has uh, taken over John Stewart's role at the Daily Show, so my my three days in Cape Town taught me a lot about uh, the um, uh, global popularity of uh, Jewish comedians. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, you emailed me about her as a matter yeah, of fact. Yeah, so. I, I made this vow to Tracy that I will find a way to get her to Chicago. We'll find an organization that needs a speaker or an entertainer for a fundraiser. We'll bring her up, and then we'll have her on the show. Very cool. Be more than happy to have her on the show, no question about it. And just for the record, my... And the humor, uh, very clean, very yeah. clean. My grandfather <laughs> actually spent uh, 10 years in Johannesburg. Oh, really? And the, the, reason, the reason basically is that in those days, even though he was from Lithuania, the uh, Russian army would come in the middle of the night and draft you. Oh. Even in Lithuania, speaking of slavery. Sure. Although this isn't quite the same slavery, but it's still not a... I'm sure if you were in that position, <laughs> you would not see the distinction. <laughs> so as a matter of fact, my other, my other grandfather, my mother's father, served 10 years in the Russian army, also pulled out of bed when he was like oh, 11 wow. or 12, 
and he, st he served in Siberia for most of that time. Ooh. So what people from Lithuania used to do if they had the means or relatives, you know, in South Africa, which is how the Jewish community in Johannesburg was built, was at a year before the children would have been snatched out of bed by the Russians in Lithuania, if they had somebody to send them to, they would, se they would se take whatever money they had and sent their children to South Africa until they were old enough that they could come back. Interesting. And because once, you know, the Russians wanted you before your bar mitzvah, so to speak, or before you hit your puberty, so they could completely form Hold you. Hold you, sure, sure. And once you got past a certain age, that was, they didn't want you anymore. That's why a lot of the, the bad guys in sub-Saharan Africa, your Kony, um, some of the folks in, in, in South Sudan and places around the continent recruit child soldiers because they want to get them before they've, they've developed into their own selves and have their own sense of agency. That's exactly, that's exactly the problem with child, the child soldier issues. They, they know if they can get them at nine years old, they've got them for life. Yep. And when I was in, uh, when I was in uh, Cape Town, I went to the, uh, the Jewish Museum and the Holocaust Museum uh, with, uh, with Tracy. And one thing that I was struck by was learning the history about the, the parallel tracks that the, the, the far racist right um, uh, went through in South Africa. The same folks were fighting tooth and nail to keep Jewish people from coming over as refugees in the 30s and 40s and who wanted to fight on the side of Germany or at the very least be neutral. Um, who had as part of their platform to keep Jews out of South Africa at all costs. Um, after World War II, that, that cause sort of died away, but they made a U-turn and started doing their best to keep uh, black people down. And the same folks who created apartheid in 1948, they, they were just three years removed from trying to keep all the, the Jewish people out. And so True. being in this museum and, and seeing people who had, um, they must be doing a really good job because there were people coming from the remote rural areas um, which you would, that would heavily uh, white, you would tend to think of as more conservative, uh, speaking Afrikaans, um, you know, were teaching their children about, you know, as bad as this is, this is the history of this country, and this is what happens when you take that sort of hatred and bigotry to the next level. And so I thought what a wonderful thing that they draw the parallels between those two, between those two movements. And you see anti-Semitism now is only a, you know, o only a few degrees away from what people were saying in the 30s. No, it's true. And uh, one thing I want to point out, too, and, and then we're going to get to politics, mm -hmm. but the, you're also on the um, Illinois State Human Rights Commission, I think. Am I getting so the name it's right? It's the Illinois Holocaust and Genocide Commission. And uh, by the way, I want to thank um, Rich Goldberg, who... Yes. Love Rich Goldberg, but for recognizing that this man belongs on that committee and yes. uh, will do a very good job for the state. And thank you, Rich. And thank we hope you, to Rich. get the governor on uh, in, the, in the very near future. So it's interestingly enough, okay, you made a huge impression by running a landmark campaign for Megan Goldish. Thank you. And uh, Jerry Esrick, who is such a strong opponent with such support, and historically in the 9th District, the suburbs always beat the city. Mm -hmm. But thanks to your strategy, the city beat the suburbs, mm -hmm. which was really unusual beyond belief. So now Jerry Esrick, um has the good taste to have hired you and I'm very glad because Jerry Esrick is a fantastically qualified judge. Mm -hmm. He was one of the th he was one of three judges who were rated as highly as any other judge. And to see him and Megan running mm -hmm. against each other was a real crying shame. But you know, thank God that Judge Esrick got reappointed, sure. and now he can run for an actual office. And we wish him very well in that. But um, you know, you he had your finger in tons of Aldermanic campaigns. <laughs> You know, I didn't even realize how, how wide your reach was, but, you know, like, like I was dealing with all these different campaigns and delivering newspapers to them, which was your idea. Right. And, and by the way, people, I do make newspapers available to political campaigns because, frankly, I mean, like, it helps you and it helps me, and you're doing part of my work for me, and I appreciate that. <laughs> my <So>. pleasure. <laughs> One thing I like about the judicial campaigns is that in the judicial canon of ethics, Candidates are really not supposed to say negative things about each other. Um, and in the race between uh, Judge Goldish and Judge Esrig, 
Uh, you know, obviously both sides wanted to win. You know, we fought hard, they fought hard, but nobody said a negative word about each other in any of the campaign materials. I agree. And yeah. uh, now, some, you know, sometimes in other races, people, people do cross some lines, but generally your contrast is limited to talking about the various bar association ratings, which I think is fair game. Um, but that's why it was it was easy to you know make the transition to helping Judge Ezri because again we both recognized that they were strong candidates and the number of people who echoed your sentiment about you know, the the ninth having such a strong group of candidates was a lot of people who made that point as well. Yeah, it was and so all, if both it, of them can end up at the end of next year being judge. Fantastic. It was it was almost like what happened in the second ward. Um, uh, by the way, yes. just just for the record, I forgot. Maybe you remember who it was, but you know we we filmed five shows today. We we had a lot of guests on. <laughs> um, somebody mentioned to me earlier that, that uh, he was he was uh, lauding me for having supported um, Cornell Wilson. Oh, fantastic! And uh, w was saying that that they also thought he was the single most outstanding person running for alderman. Well, I'm I'm going to agree with the pardon. Sh Shalom Klein. Oh, Shalom Klein. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to agree with the Chicago Tribune who said in there endorsement that this was just an embarrassment of riches for the second ward that any of the six candidates uh, all who had different strengths um, you know could, could reasonably serve as aldermen and in a different field um, if you could farm them out around the city any of them would make an excellent yeah, uh, an I, excellent alderman. What, I want one of you people to move to the 50th ward please we really need you <laughs> <laughs> but what a great field and I um, it really is and I know a lot of those I know a lot of those people you know going in to yeah. tell you the truth and you know I think uh, I think Brian Hopkins already is an excellent alderman I, I wrote him the uh, the first check of the runoff campaign nice and I think he's uh, he's He's proven he can tackle some really complex issues. I mean, the, the figuring out the geography of that ward is complicated enough. Oh. Let's trying to manage development and development that works for Ukrainian Village as well as Streeterville. So, uh, yeah, a great field of candidates, and I got to become friends with most of the the candidates and their staff. And yeah, and a good field. If you're watching, by the way, Mr. Second Ward Alderman, uh, I want you back on the show real soon. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so now he's he's a really real quality. I mean. Like you said, there, there were half a dozen quality individuals mm -hmm. over there. Absolutely. No, they, that's where all the riches were. So at, at this point, um, it's always a pleasure, Sean. Uh, why don't you give people your contact information? Oh, sure. Appreciate it. Um, I have two websites that our firm is, is running right now, www.knicommunications.com and winningjudicialcampaigns.com. Uh, I can be reached at stenner at knicommunications.com and... Never too busy to take a phone call, 312-576-8822. Sounds good. I want to thank you very much, Sean Tenner, uh, best campaign manager in the area by far. Thank you. And I want to thank you very much for joining us, and uh, not to mention your wonderful humanitarian uh, stuff. And by the way, he tries ducking off the show so many times and gives me a list of all these people from all these worthwhile causes <laughs> to put on. And I do try to accommodate. You know, yes, you do. So, so, some of these people are shy, but... In any event, we, we are running out of time. I want to thank Sonny Hirsch, my entire technical crew. Thank you for joining us, everybody, and keep watching, and all the best. Bye-bye.